Meal planning is important because it prevents us from being a disappointed wreck when dinner time comes around and we have no clue what to make or even if we have the ingredients to make the meal. It's a time and a money saver, but most importantly, it frees up valuable brain space. Creating a meal plan prepares us for the week to come and gives us peace of mind that we're organized and can feed ourselves and our family. That's why I do it, and that's why Plan to Eat helps me do it. Your subscription includes access to the Plan to Eat website and fully featured mobile apps on iOS and Android. And Plan to Eat gives you the tools to clip and organize recipes from any website, the ones your family loves and that fit your dietary preferences and needs. And you can create a meal plan around your schedule. Then what happens is the Plan to Eat software automatically creates an organized shopping list based on your plan. So sign up for your free trial at plantoeat.com slash timecrafting. That's plantoeat.com forward slash timecrafting. The coupon will be automatically applied to your account and can be used when you're ready to subscribe. It's valid for new customers only. Give Plan to Eat a try today. I'm Mike Vardy, and this is the Productivityist Podcast. Welcome to the Productivityist Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Vardy. And this week on the show, Casey Proctor joins me. Casey is a father of four with a healthy addiction to coffee and Lego minifigures. And I mean, a man after my own heart, because those two things I definitely have going on. I I love my coffee. And if you see my office, I've got quite a few symbolic Lego minifigures hanging uh, hanging out here. Uh, Casey helps busy dads get fit. And on this episode, we're going to talk about vices and virtues. We're going to talk about streaks. We're going to talk about the don't break the chain ritual. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of these, these things, including um, simplicity, uh, so many cool things that, that are related to, you know, as, as a busy dad and a busy parent, really, uh, I really want to get, get in better shape. And there's different, how, what the differences are between like, what is, what is getting in shape mean to me? What does it mean to Casey? What does it mean to you? We're going to talk about that and, and the role that that plays in productivity. I think that is a huge factor as well as what vices and virtues can do to your productivity as well. Lots to discuss in this episode. Let's get to it. Here's my conversation with Casey Proctor here on the Productivity is Podcast. Enjoy. I'd like to welcome Casey Proctor to the Productivity is Podcast. How are you doing, Casey? Doing great, Mike. How are you, man? Really, really good. Really good. You know, I've never asked you, and we're going to go right out of the gate. What does KC stand for? <laughs> I'm revealing, you're asking me to reveal my secrets right out of no, the gate. No, no, you don't, you don't have to tell fair. me. You don't have no, to. It's, okay. Kansas, it's Kansas I, uh, City. It's Kansas City, isn't it? <laughs> Although I am, uh, I do have an order out. I'm going to get a Kansas City Royals you, hat. You, you need to. Um, you need to. I've been looking for like one with a V on it. Like I, when I was in Nashville at Tribe, the Vanderbilt one was there. I'm like, ah, if it just only had the V on it, but it doesn't. It says Vandy or something. I'm like, I can't. Like it's got to just have a V on it and then I could get it. But anyways, I have to try it. Okay, there. This is a challenge to your audience. Find you a sports team or something that has just a really cool V only yeah. logo, preferably so in checkmark creates... form. Preferably in checkmark form, because then it oh, then it's perfect. like even it's spot on. But <laughs> it, are you willing to tell us what KC stands for? I am. I am. I'm actually. I'm a little proud of it. I am named after. So both my parents uh, had four brothers and sisters, and I. My first name is my dad's oldest brother, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Uh, my middle name is my mom's oldest brother, Curtis. So Casey go. stands for Kevin Curtis. That's great. That's awesome. So there we go. Something that I didn't know out of the gate. One of the things we talked about as we were preparing for this episode, we want to dive into you know project management and and even the idea of horizontal theming and and the fact that you um, f- fitness and stuff, which which I think lends nicely to what I want to start with, which is, you know, I mean, I find that when I start to do activities that are revolving around fitness and wellness, that's, it's the one thing that if I do it consistently, I can get addicted to it. I can, I can make it sticky, but it's, it's the hardest thing for me to do, to keep, you know, to, to make it stick, um, which is why I've horizontally themed it. But I want to talk a little bit about, we were talking about this uh, from the get go is this idea of the things that like you and I both have like this, uh, these addictive personalities, right? Like these, um, you know, where, where, you know, Lego, Lego is a great example or my green lantern stuff. Like, and it's not like, I I don't want to, I'm not going to talk about like things that are, you know, vices that are, let's say, particularly, dangerous maybe dangerous not Mm -hmm. the right word but you know what i mean like these ones that may seem innocuous but they actually can be detrimental if they if they go unchecked right like you you have some too right 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So I have a, a strong affinity for Lego. I have four children. Uh, and one of the great things about having kids is you get to extend mm. your childhood uh, a little bit through them. And so my children end up buying me Legos for my birthday and Christmas more often than I get it for them. And at this point, I've acquired over 200 different minifigures uh, across different themes. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, uh, there are, you know, it's, it's more of a, with that addictive personality is like a compulsion. Like you latch onto something you really like a, a, a perfect example would be the stack, the stack of empty moleskin notebooks mm. on the floor of my office. I have at least 10 of them and they're different themed and stuff. And none of them are written in, but there's yeah. something about, there's something romantic or mysterious about a, a blank notebook because each page is like an opportunity. Like this is how I justify it to myself. Like each page is an opportunity. And so an empty notebook is just, you know, a hundred or 200 different opportunities waiting to happen. And if you, if I don't buy the notebook, then I'm not going to have those opportunities, um, because they're on those empty pages, you know, that need to be filled. Um, and so it's taken me almost four years to get through the Moleskin notebook that I have uh, in my hands right now. Um, but I have 10 more to, to get through and they're different themed, like ones in Evernote one. I have two Star yeah. Wars ones, three Lego ones. <laughs> they're just, well, it, and I'm like, for me, it's the Baron fig stuff, right? Like, I mm. mean, and we were talking about this before we started, you know, I mean, I have, four squire pens all with different colors in them to be fair like green blue black and red so that but now now if i buy another one it's like well why you didn't need it you have all the other ones i have two of the squat like the stones that you can the sheet which are nice they're so nice so i have one that sits in my reading chair my reading zone which is in the back corner of my office where Mm -hmm. i'll have that where if i'm reading and then i've got my green lantern post-it notes that i got for christmas that's where i put my notes when i'm reading a a paper book and right now actually as we're recording this i'm actually just going through the errors and omissions in in the productivity playbook print edition just because so that's what i'm using that for um i have and i have so many baron fig like vanguards i mean mind you when i go visit baron fig they to be fair they give me some stuff too but i've bought like the the long and key which is a nice. beautiful oh, oh. I mean, oh so gorgeous like but but and and then you know again with lego for me it's not so much lego uh i'm very deliberate about it and i think that's one of the things you can do when you have some kind of a compulsion or a vice or even even i mean to go as far as say an addiction is if you you can get deliberate about those two and you can create rules around them um and and recently and actually you know i you know this is about as good a time as any um, considering that it's been several months, um, pa- we're actually past the point of, of when I did 90 days of this before, but I just decided one day when I was sitting, I was reading the road to character by David Brooks, which is a great book and I highly recommend it. And they talked about how Eisenhower just quit smoking one day. He just decided to quit smoking. There was no, you know, and it wasn't, you know, when you say cold Turkey, um, I don't even know if that's the right term for it, the way he did it. And I'm sitting there in this pub on groundhog day which is fittingly a day that I normally use as a, like kind of a reset for my year. Cause it's kind of the midway point since I start in September. It's well, it's, it's not midway, but it's the quarter, the quarter mark. And I just, I was having this beer that will like the go-to beer. And I just decided, you know what? I've had all the beers and I've not had a drop, drop of alcohol since not a one. And it's not because I, I, you know, had a problem or anything like that. It's just, I, I dug into, you know, well, maybe I need to create some rules around this. And and I did. I looked at all a whole bunch of different rules about it. And I'm going to write about this in the, in the vessel. Um, you know, uh, you may have already, uh, if you've subscribed, you'll see it in the vessel at some point. But the idea of like what the rules that I went through to ultimately come up with the most binary of rules of all, which is I just the, the, the rule of zero, which I don't drink. You know, I just don't drink alcohol anymore. But um, you can create like for me, the Lego compulsion is like. Um, or the Lego minifigs rule is like, if it has a resonance towards what I do, like if it'll fit in my office motif. So I remember we shared, like you saw um, on Instagram when I shared calendar man, right? Mm-hmm. So we bought the calendar man set for my son so I could get calendar man. And it's not even a cal- It's the Riddler set with the, with the car. Cause I wanted calendar man. Um, and then when um and i told you about this too when the lego batman mini fig series came out that had clock king in it i'm like yep. i have to get clock king like i have to because it, it, it fits that motif um i have syndrome from uh the incredibles 
And the reason is because I use a quote of his in my talks all the time. I have vision. Vision is, you know, obviously vision is a big part of what I do. I have, of course, Green Lantern's and Sinestro everywhere, both in, in big and small minifig form. And I have Moon Knight, which is not an official Lego figure, but Moon Knight is kind of like, I'm not a huge Batman fan, um, but Moon Knight is like Marvel's version of Batman. He's like the 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 white knight, for lack of a better term. And then I have, Absolutely. you know, and I have the Dad Summit Lego figure, because again, that's, we got a custom figure. But I mean, all of these are definitely deliberate around a specific, I have, I, like again, a set of rules that these fall into. Um, do you have, like, are you establishing rules around that? Or do you find that you need to, like, again, with soda pop, we talked about that, like, you know, it's, it's, if it's in the house, it's not gonna, it, you're gonna drink it. Same with me. Like, do you, are, are you starting to establish some boundaries and rules around these vices that you may have, or these, you know, for lack of a better term? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I've done, or I've found is, you know, it's, if it, it I like your example of binary, like making it as binary as possible. And so like, if it's not in the house, then I'm not going to eat it or I'm not going to drink it. And so I have my family history and background of substance abuse. And mm -hmm. so I like, we have, we'll very often have none or very little uh, alcohol in the house. Um, like my wife and I enjoy wine and we'll have that once in a while. And I, I prefer hard ciders to beers and people can have their own opinions about that. <laughs> um, but again, we don't, we don't have it very often because I know if we did and it became like a regular, you know, uh, a staple in our fridge, uh, that I would drink it more often. And I don't like, I don't want to set that example for my children. And I also know it's not healthy, you know, for me. Um, this is a decision I've made, um, with the soda, same thing. Like I, you know, if it's there, I will drink it. Like I love Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper is one of my other favorites. Um, you know, Coke or Pepsi, I have no skin in that game. Um, but like it's, if it's there, like it tastes good and I enjoy it and it gives me like a boost of energy, you know, regardless of the crash afterwards. Um, and so, uh, my wife has spent almost a year by not drinking soda. And so with the turn of the new year, I made it, I recognized this habit in myself of regularly consuming soda and I'm trying to be healthier and set a good example. And I have a personal brand of fit dad life. Um, and so I've, I've not had any soda since December 31st. Um, and it's been great. And there's definitely times where I want to have it. Um, but I'm trying to go the whole year or mm -hmm. at least as much as possible. And then after that, you know, I like the idea of kind of guardrails or guard or, or guidelines. And so a friend of mine, he stopped drinking soda at home. So like he only yeah. drinks it if they go out somewhere with someone. And so I like, I'll probably adopt a similar rule to that. So like, like the movies, out, like the movies we talked exactly. about. Yeah. Like if we go to the movies or go out for pizza or something, um, you know, then I'll have, uh, would have soda. Um, but I like those parameters because again, the, the binary is so easy to keep track of because either you did or you didn't. Um, and it's not like trying to keep track of how much, because as soon as you complicate the measurement, um, people mm -hmm. always try, we always have a tendency of trying to find the loopholes. You know, um, you talked about earlier, if you had the rule of, you know, you're only allowed to have you know, two drinks a day or two drinks at night. If you go out, you know, with friends at 11 and the clock ticks over midnight, like it's a new, technically it's a new day. So mm -hmm. then you have, you can crap, you can crap rationalize. I love that. Is that your phrase? Is that your no, phrase? No, no, no. Schechter and I've talked about it before, but I think it's an actual term crap rationalization. Yeah. It's like this, you know, you can, you can do that. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> it's a Canadian, maybe it's a Canadianism. It could very well be. It might be, but I love it because it's so true because we do it with everything. Like I'm, you know, uh, with, you know, fitness and nutrition, it's like, well, you know, I'm not going to eat, you know, uh, people choose carbs or something. Well, except, you know, fruit or whatever, um, or I'm not going to eat, uh, or I'm not, you know, I'm only going to drink, I'm not going to drink soda. Um, but I'll have, you know, all of the sparkling water or whatever, you know, like we always try to find these loopholes. We're like you need to work out three times a week. Well, you know, uh, how long mm -hmm. we, try to find all, we try to find all of these little loopholes and exceptions. Um, one, uh, practice that, that I've start that I've restarted recently and stuck to over the last four weeks is intermittent fasting. Mm. Um, and I, there's a very simple app that I use. It's called zero. 
uh, it's free. You can just search it on, I think it might be iOS only, um, but you just search zero and it's very simple. It's like you are either eating or not eating during these hours. Like, and people ask exception questions. Well, does this break a fast or does this break a fast? It's like, no, you don't eat. Like it's zero. It's a very binary. It's yes or no, like water. And that's it. Uh, and actually coffee, like coffee is, uh, one of the few things that doesn't break a fast. So I still drink coffee black with nothing in it. Like, well, does a little sweetener break the fast, a little cream? Yes. Like zero calorie intake during, you know, your fasting periods. Uh, and the, the, I guess you could say style that or method that I use is a 16 hour fast. And so I stop eating, uh, typically between six and eight at night. And then I don't eat until 10 or 12 the next day. So whatever, whatever in that range equates to 16 hours, I am not intaking any calories. Because one of the things I've noticed about myself is like I the only reason I appear to be any measure of fit is because I work out a lot, but I eat, I have eaten like my nutrition has always been terrible like i would just eat whatever i want like I'd go to mcdonald's get two cheeseburgers mm -hmm. a big chicken a large fry and a huge dr pepper and eat the whole thing you know we get pizza with the family and i down half a pizza and not even blink um and you know eat junk late at night in the morning you know uh i've been, i had started to try and eat healthier with i was having a banana and some oatmeal and some apples um, but it's super easy when I drop the kids off in the morning to swing by Starbucks and get a triple grande caramel macchiato and, you know, uh, one of their breakfast sandwiches or whatever. And if you look at the calories, it's like half your calories for the day. Um, and so I uh, have this is my second time attempting intermittent fasting. And this is the longest I've gone through it. But I went over three straight weeks without a break. Uh, I went over four weeks actually without a break. Uh, and then on Friday I went and saw black Panther and like had candy and a bunch of junk, like yep. a 10 five at night. So that ruined the fast for the next day. And I just let it keep going through the three day weekend. Uh, and then I jumped back on the bandwagon yesterday. Um, you know, and it's been, and it's been great. Um, and I like it, I like intermittent fasting for a lot of different reasons. Um, and we can get into that in a little bit, but I don't want to, kind of derail the conversation. No, 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 no. So um, I want one of the things that we talked about, you talked about was this idea of simplicity, like making things that that idea of being binary and simple. And, and Austin Church and I talked about that on a recent episode, like simplicity is like a competitive advantage, because mm -hmm. you're kind of eliminating all of the things that make things that kind of get in the way. And um, this leads us into a nice conversation um, about, you know, the idea of horizontal theming, and, and, and mm -hmm. things that, you know, so when, when I look at the work you do, because uh, you do, you, I mean, you've got a lot of, you've got a lot of irons in the fire. You're, you're, you've got a, a day job that keeps you pretty busy. Uh, and you could, you feel free to share what that is. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to you. Just like your name. I'm just going to leave that up to you to whether, <laughs> and, and, um, and the idea of, you know, so like vertical and horizontal theming can, you know, you've got the fit dad life stuff. You've got your family because you've got a big family and you've got a lot of, a lot of moving parts. Um, you know, how do you find that using, that kind of approach, if you do, and, and, and when it fits, uh, helps you with keeping things simple so that, you know, you don't run into things like decision fatigue and, and, and you don't end up getting in your own way, uh, when, when things kind of go a little bit, as you said earlier, a little bit off the rails. Yeah, absolutely. Um, side note, I feel like a conversation about decision fatigue for married couples could be an episode all by itself <laughs> because I can't tell you how many times my wife and I have had this exact conversation. Yeah. What do you want for dinner? I don't care. What do you want for dinner? I don't care. <laughs> back yep. and forth, like back and forth, like the vultures on jungle book. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that again that could be a total own episode uh, but when it comes to vertical and horizontal theming like it has been you and i have had this conversation a couple times i think we first did at wds uh, in portland mm -hmm. um like two and a half maybe two years ago now um and what i love so much about it is that simplicity factor and the structure because you know we i think all of us have a creative tendency for some of us it's stronger than others 
uh, and the having context and having constraints actually fosters your creative ability. Uh, and that come that is the same with your schedule as well. Uh, Jeff Goins, who I work for as his project manager, uh, GoinsWriter.com, he talks about you know creating a writer envir- writing environment where you are writing at the same time of day, at the same place, uh, using the same tools. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you write at home, at your desk, at a cafe, but as well, or whether you write at night or in the morning or in the afternoon. Uh, or whatever tool you use to write, whether it's Word or Google Docs or Scrivener or whatever, but make it consistent. And having that consistency is what will foster creativity because your environment then fosters the presence of the muse rather than trying to force inspiration. Like it sets you up for success rather than set, setting you up for distraction and failure, um, which is why I love horizontal theming so much uh, and, and vertical theming together. Uh, for me and my role, I primarily utilize horizontal theming because of the nature of the work that I do uh, with project management for Jeff. And so that includes, you know, content and social media and drafting emails and having team calls and stuff like that. So there are certain times of the day, like the morning, I start off each morning with doing reports. So I have a horizontal theme across, uh, my calendar where every morning from eight to eight thirty. I'm running reports. So that's financial, that's web traffic, social media, et cetera. Some of it's automated, but some of it has to be manually done. So that's Mm -hmm. my morning every morning uh, as far as my work day starting. That's a horizontal theme across that. Uh, the fu- the next horizontal theme is a bit of administration. So, you know, catching up on emails, catching up on Slack messages, uh, making sure that, you know, some different elements of the projects that we're working on are moving forward. And that's about an hour or two across there. Uh, the next horizontal theme is a lunch slash workout break. And so at that point, like I've gone through a morning uh, kind of chunk of time and I need a break to step away from the computer, get the blood flowing, eat some food. Uh, because by then I've gotten through my fast from the night before. Uh, and so I'll have lunch and then I'll do a home workout. And I actually, um, use, uh, I use jump ropes and I discovered them about, uh, eight months ago and I absolutely love them. Uh, and I will tell you, two things in combination with intermittent fasting and doing this high intensity trading with, uh, they're actually weighted jump ropes. It's not just your regular jump rope. They're actually weighted. So there's some heft to them. Um, I have like four different weights, uh, four different ropes at different weights. Um, I am down 12 pounds for the year and I am starting to see my abs again. Wow. Uh, and so like, I am a huge advocate for these ropes and for intermittent fasting. Um, we can, I can give you some links and resources to give to your audience, uh, afterwards so that, and you know, cause it's not, I will say it's not for everyone and is not a, like solve all your problems, uh, approach to your diet. Um, but done properly, it can really help you kind of accelerate the results you see. Um, and I have some very like scientifically vetted resources to share. You know, and and it's funny, uh, you know, as we're recording this and, you know, uh, I just come back from a conference in San Diego where um, a friend of mine, Scott Rose, uh, was talking to some of the people that were there about this, uh, the, the idea, the value of like a 24 hour fast and even Mm -hmm. going further than that. And, you know, I'm in a mastermind with some of these people and they're, I mean, at least the, the people that were there are considering it and they've got me considering it too. As of, as of this recording, who knows, by the time you listen to this, I may have already done it. Um, but, uh, there's definitely some, what's interesting is actually one of the conferences I'm going to Dave Asprey will be there. So he talks about Mm. bulletproof stuff. And I mean, some of that stuff is, I mean, I think all of that stuff, no pun intended, you need to take with a grain of salt, depending on who, (laughs) you know, where it's coming. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. But, but I I definitely think that there's some value there. And what I want to do is, is we're going to take a quick break here and I want to dive more into fasting in in our bonus episode for our our members as well. I've got a couple other things I want to talk about there, but we're gonna take a quick break from the, to, to share a promotional message with all of you here. So stick around. Okay. So Casey, I'm going to ask you in the weekly episode or in the bonus episode, if you want to write about this decision fatigue for couples thing for, for as a guest post, would you be willing to do that? 
So, I would so, love to do that. Decision okay. fatigue for couples. Yeah. You got it. I'll make sure that I send you information on that. And that'll, that'll be, you don't need to have that done until like May. Okay. Cause Great. I want to, uh, what I want to do is put it, um, right before, like the week before your episode. So that way people are like, Oh, you, you get like a double shot of Casey, like the week before a blog post, the week after, you know. Oh, great. Cool. Right. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. So we're going to jump back into the show right now. So one of the things that I think, uh, oh, let me try that again. Welcome back, everybody. So I don't want to say everybody. One second. Welcome back to the show. So Casey, we've talked about vices. We've talked about, you know, again, I want to dive into the intermittent fasting and, and other things you could do as well as, you know, the idea of decision fatigue and things like that. We'll save that for the for the bonus episode for uh, members of the productivity community. But I want to talk about this idea of virtues because this is something I've been spending some time with. We touched on it a little bit earlier, like vices and virtues is when, you know, when you're working on, you know, Fit Dad Life and all the stuff you've got going on, how much you know, I mean, I'm not a big believer in New Year's resolutions. You know that. Um, I think that that you should be thinking either beyond the year, which is where virtue comes in, or w in smaller increments like monthly theming and things like that. Where, like, what do you spend a lot of time thinking about virtue and the value of you know the like let's say Ben Franklin's thirteen virtues, temperance being one of them that I guess I'm looking at with with the no alcohol thing. But do you look at those and kind of? see how you can incorporate them into your work? Or is that something you really don't, I mean, is it is something you really don't look at or you just happen to uh, kind of espouse without even knowing, uh, you know, it just kind of happens? <laughs> that's, a, that's a fair question. Um, I would say I do it intentionally, but not with the specific virtue in mind necessarily. So, you know, every year people, you know, people are listening to this uh, in May um, and, you know, every year, millions of people set new year's resolutions that they'll break within five days, if not 30 days. Yeah. They say, uh, they say by the second week of February, 80% of new year's resolutions are broken. Nice. I've heard it. I've, I've heard elsewhere. It's been even higher. Regardless, those are millions of people who are left disappointed and, and set themselves up for failure for the rest of the year. And so in looking at kind of this year, what I did differently was I looked back at past years and the goals that I've set that I still haven't realized like, you know, building a, you know, digital platform to a certain level or a certain, you know, level or degree of physical fitness uh, or reading a certain number of books. And I boiled it down to the habits that support those outcomes. And so, you know, if you think of the virtue of, you know, being of owning and controlling your personal health. So being, being healthy. And what are the elements of that? Well, that boils down to good nutrition, uh, good, you know, getting enough rest, uh, and getting enough exercise. So boil that down even further. And so that's, okay, what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Tim Ferriss talks about in his book, Tribe of Mentors, like, what would it look like if this was easy? And so, you know, I kind of took each of those outcomes that I wanted and boiled them down to daily habits. So if I want to read 12 books, you know, setting that, making a very achievable, easy goal of 12 books in a year, I need to read at least 10 minutes a day. I guarantee you everyone has 10 minutes a day to read, but if they're not intentional about it, and you talk a lot about being intentional with where you spend your attention, um, you know, if I'm not intentional about you know, spending that 10 minutes a day reading, then I'm not going to get it done. So, you know, reading for 10 minutes a day, writing 500 words, they don't have to be great words, I don't have to publish them, but they just have to be written, uh, working out for 20 minutes, whether that's, you know, with my jump ropes, or going for a walk, or actually going to the gym, um, not eating after eight o'clock at night, uh, because I recognize that, you know, I have a, I will stay up late, uh, and then while you're staying up late, they're actually your the reason why you crave uh, junk food basically uh, is because your body's trying to get ready for sleep. You know, depending on your sleep cycle, um, but like your your body will start to crave sugar. Like biologically, it's not like a personality problem. Like oh, I you know I, I want sugar and I shouldn't be having. It. It's like no, your body like wants it and you should go to sleep instead. Um, or like have, drink a bunch of water. So you have a sense, you know, some semblance of fullness. Um, and so I set these, you know, little hab daily habits that were really achievable. And then like, if I, uh, if I make it, it gets checked off. Uh, I use an app called streaks. 
Um, mm-hmm. It's on iOS. I don't know if it's on Android, but I use, this, use the paid version of Streaks, and it has stuff to do and to not do. So one of the things I'm trying to do less is uh, I uh, have a tendency to swear a lot. Uh, I work from home by myself, and so when <laughs> I get frustrated, you know, it kind of just it lets loose naturally. Um, but I wanted to do that less because I like I just didn't like it about myself. Um, and so like, I have a thing where it says, don't swear. And so like every day I don't swear, I get to check it off. Um, you know, and it's, so each day I'm able to go in here. Uh, the other part of nutrition was actually taking a daily vitamin. Um, you know, so checking that off, um, and not drinking soda was something on there. So like the soda thing has been my longest streak, Mm -hmm. um, which has been fantastic. But, um, John Acuff in his book finish, he talks about how the hardest day is the day after perfect. So those 80% of people who, you know, who fail their resolution by the second week of February, that doesn't mean they can't continue it. Like that doesn't mean they can't start over. Um, I forget who it is. You would probably know, uh, who the guy who talks about like not breaking the chain. Oh, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. There you go. Jerry (laughs) Seinfeld. Uh, whose series cars and comedians getting coffee is probably one of my favorite things to binge on Netflix. Yeah, it's great. It's great total tangent that will not make you productive. Um, but you know, he talks about not breaking the chain. Well, what do you do when the chain breaks, you start building it over again. So this last weekend, when I completely fell off the wagon and binged on pizza and candy for three days, uh, with the family, like I went to a movie Friday, I went to a movie Saturday on Sunday. I don't know what happened. Uh, on Monday, uh, the kids had the day off. We all went to the dentist and then went out to Chinese food. So like I had a whole, like I just ate a ton of junk this weekend and at the end I didn't fast. And so it would have been very easy to continue the chain of, of bad, of quote unquote bad behavior. But if you break that chain, then you're able to start back on building the right one. And so yesterday I was back on an intermittent fast and like I'm feeling good today. And so today is day two of that. And so what I like about the Streaks app is that it tracks everything on the whole and not just the unbroken chain. So I can go back and look at you know my year so far of progress and be like, I have not sworn more days than I did. You know, or I have not had soda more days than I did have soda. Um, I have I have read more days than I haven't read. Um, and so, as long as you know you, you, because if you just you know let the chain break, and then don't try to rebuild it or don't try to break the bad chain, quote unquote, um, you're yeah, going to get to the end of the well, year. There's and, there's yeah, regret shows up, then sh- then guilt, then shame, right? So ah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and we don't want to be there. And so when it comes to like the virtues, I was looking at the, you know, in considering virtues versus vices, I was looking at, you know, the virtues of the outcomes that I wanted to see in my life this year, and then boiling those down to very simple, very achievable daily habits. So like, you know, one, one thing people do a lot is, uh, you know, everyone knows they should probably drink more water. You know, like if you're drinking coffee or soda or, or beer or whatever, like you could probably stand to have a little more water in your life. Uh, you know, and so like on the app, you can have drink, you know, it's, I think a gallon is recommended. Like mm-hmm. that might seem like a lot to start with. So like drink one glass, so, yep. like build that momentum with a very small, very like stupid, easy, stupid, simple, stupid, easy goal of one glass of water a day. And then it's like, all right, like I've made it seven days in a row. Let's up it to two glasses, you know, and like, oh, I missed a day. I didn't drink any water yesterday. Well, that doesn't mean you're not, you're going to just stop drinking water. Um, or at least you shouldn't, you know, like start drinking water again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, yeah, and I, like, and I think that that's something that a lot of people struggle with is they, they, they break it and then they're like, okay, well, that's it. That's the end of it. Like it, it, they don't, they don't cut themselves some slack along the way. And I think that, that, that these, these tools, whether you're using like, I mean, so on the now year calendar that I have here, I mean, I've got the little, the little boxes in the corner of, of our, of our calendar that, that we sell through new year. Um, and, and I'm keeping those when we do the redesign because it, it's, it, it does offer that don't break the chain. And all I've got there, it's really simple. It's a little tiny box in the corner and I only use it for one thing, which is, did I write in my journal today? And like at the, at, on that date. And, and the rule is if it, if I did, it gets a red dot, like in that circle. But if I didn't, 
Um, and as of this recording yesterday, I didn't write it at that night. I took a picture and put it in my entry, which is one of the tricks I use to make sure that every day there's something there. Mm. So I have a trigger, but I didn't write it uh, in in that night. So today I wrote it and I listed why I didn't, but it gets a black dot. So I'm like, I didn't, you know, it doesn't mean that I, uh, because I did the journal entry, like I, I do end up doing it. The black dot is almost more of a shameful mark than the red. <laughs> it's like, crap, Mike, you didn't. And I can see, like, I can look right now back and see that there's one, two, three. Um, and I can see not just like isolated incidents, but I can see where it happened like two or three times in a five, like in a, in a, in a two week span, let's say. And I'm like, what happened there? Like, why didn't that happen? So you can learn just as much from when you fall down than when you succeed. I mean, that's mm. how, I mean, we, it's, it's, I mean, people call it failing forward, you know, the old adage, the best, the best baseball players hit the ball, you know, 30% of the time, like between 30 and 40% of the time. And if you hit it 40% of the time, then you're like the best baseball hitter out there because no one's hit 400 since, you know, Ted Williams back in the day. So, I mean, right. it's, it's all about being, re, having realistic expectations and, and, you know, one of the things that that I appreciate about you and your work is that you you do have some deliberate things set up to make sure that you are being you are able to kind of move things forward, even when sometimes you you may fall down along the way. And uh, Fit Dad Life, I get is is a is is an area where I think like and, and the links in the show notes. We're going to talk more about some of that in the bonus episode, but. Um, before we wrap up, can you just share what people can expect at Fit Dad Life and where else they can find you? Because I think that there's some, I mean, for people who are dads like me and, 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 or even parents, I mean, realistically, like how, like what can they get there that will help them, you know, kick some of these vices maybe, or maybe make working out a vice and then also build, you know, have these streaks that they can continue and, and then they can see results like you've seen. Absolutely. Um, my goal in starting Fit Dad Life was really to help myself. Uh, I am writing, uh, from the context of being a busy dad. I have four children, uh, and age ranges from almost two to 16. Uh, and I have a full-time job and I'm married. Um, I, I have a few friends, <laughs> um, you know, and it's, uh, and I you know maintain a certain level of fitness. And so like, it's super busy. There is so much to keep track of like adulting is hard enough on its own. Like you could have a full-time job, just making sure your teeth are healthy. Mm -hmm. Like, because you have to floss and use a water pick and mouthwash and don't eat certain foods and like, make sure you brush twice, three times, however many times a day and that you've got the right toothpaste and you visit the dentist so often and get braces and like all this, like just maintaining yourself as a healthy human being is like a full-time job. Like, especially if you add in stuff like nutrition and exercise and, you know, social interactions and then like paying for all of that, like having a job that sufficiently, you know, provides for all of that. And so what I wanted was a, was a place where I could have a community and content that helped me as a busy dad get and stay fit. Uh, and that was simple. Um, I've been through a number of like 30 day challenges, whether they are creative or fitness based. And I've found that the ones that work the best, they're simple because it doesn't have to be complicated. Like your, your fitness routine, your writing routine, your, your work routine, your morning routine. It, it doesn't have to be complicated. Keep it simple. And the other thing is like, make sure it's effective. Like, does it work? Like intermittent fasting doesn't work for everyone. And there's reasons why. And so, you know, and other diets and fitness, you know, routines, they just don't work for people. Either they don't like them, which is a very valid reason. Mm -hmm. Like they hate, like some people, the idea of doing an intermittent fast, they hate. I would challenge them to try it once, but if it doesn't work, that's fine. Like you can still eat healthy and have three meals a day and lose weight and be fit and feel good about yourself. You do not have to intermittent fast. So does it work? And the other element is that accountability. And so that's where the community factor comes into play because you have to keep yourself accountable. Like that's where I'm using the streaks app to make sure that I am keeping you know on track with daily habits that I want to not only for myself, but then as an example to my kids, 
and to others, but then also in public. So you have that self accountability of something like an app or a checklist or, you know, a calendar on the wall that you can put an X through or a dot on a given day. Um, but then also in public. So the thing that I love about, you know, challenges in the fit dead life community, um, and I'll have a special, uh, resource for listeners of the, of your podcast, um, is that community element because then you're able to you're able to share your failures and your wins because it's like hey you know what I didn't work out today I didn't feel like it and I had a crap day at work and my kids got a cold and I just didn't do it today and so you have that ability to kind of vent and rant and share and people can commiserate with you but then challenge and support and encourage you in a positive direction because then the next day you're like hey I made it to the gym and I worked out for two hours or I only had 30 minutes. So I did like some body weight routines on my back porch or in my living room. And you have those people to cheer you on and to uh, come alongside you on that journey that you're going through uh, with your fitness. So for Fit Dad Life, it's helping busy dads get and stay fit on their terms. And where can they go to get this resource? So this resource will be at fitdadlife.com slash Vardy, V-A-R-D-Y. Because it's way easier to spell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, it'll be fitdadlife.com slash Vardy. I'll have some exclusive resources uh, for your listeners. Uh, and included in that will be a, a larger uh, community that they'll be invited into. Cool. And you can be found on Twitter at Casey Proctor, right? I can. Casey Proctor on Twitter. Uh, you can find me there, uh, and on I have a Facebook group that's at Dead Life as well. Awesome. Casey, thanks for joining me today. Really, really appreciate the time. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Take care, man. Big thanks to Casey for joining me this week on the show. You can find all the things we discussed, any related links and everything in the show notes, whether you go to the website to look at that for the, the podcast episode, just go to the podcast page and you can find it there, or... You know, if you're listening to this in your podcast uh, aggregator or, or, or app of choice, you can find the show notes there as well. Now, if you want to take your listening experience with this podcast to the next level, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one is you can go beyond the podcast, the productivity, and check out everything else we have to offer. And the best way to do that uh, is to go to productivityist.com slash membership. We are currently working on building up a, a whole bunch of cool things for a, a community at Productivity Est. And uh, there's still a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, so I, I can't reveal too much here over the air because as I'm recording this, uh, some things are, are kind of in flux. But if you go to productivityist.com slash membership, you'll get the goods there. So check that out if you want to know more about, if you want to go beyond just the audio, if you want to get into video and written and all that stuff, that's where you can go. Now, if you're not ready for that yet, or you're like, you know what, Mike, I'm a podcast listener, and I really want to support the show that way, uh, there are two things you can do there, um, and they can be combined into one nice little batched task. So what you can do is on your podcast app of choice or wherever you're listening to your podcast, iTunes is obviously the most common, is you can go to give us a rating and or a review. Now, ratings are helpful because it helps elevate the show or, or, or you know, give us some nice critical uh, stars to look at. Say, hey, what, are we, what do we need to improve upon? Uh, you could do that in your app of choice, okay? Uh, you know, and, and that would be really, really helpful. But the thing that helps take us to the next level and give us kind of some context behind why that rating is as such is a review. And we read each and every review that we get. John Polster, my producer, and I, we look at those and we say, hey, what can we do to make things better? Some of the feedback that I've gotten over the years is, hey, Mike, you talk too much. Let the, let the guests talk. And I, I've gotten better at that over the years. Uh, things like, you know, guest requests come in that way. Uh, you know, we hear lots of great feedback and insights and, and thoughts on the show, and that often comes through the rating and review process. So if you're willing to do that, that would be great. And then there's a third thing you can do if, you, if you're like, I'm shy, I don't want to do the membership thing yet, and I don't want to do the rating and review because maybe my iTunes handle is the same as my name. You can email us directly at podcast at productivityist.com. Any guest suggestions you might have, any feedback you have, uh, that email gets checked quite regularly and ultimately gets to me. So there you go. Uh, thanks to uh, Casey for joining me. Thanks to John for producing the show. Thanks to the rest of my team for putting together the imagery and then doing some of the research and, and, and getting it up on the website and all that stuff. And thanks to you for listening. Really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm Mike Barter, the host of the Productivities Podcast. And until next time, 
keep moving things forward. 